Welcome back to the Deep Dive series. In our last video, we crowned Seed VR2 the new king of 4K upscaling, and today we are answering a direct request from the community to go even deeper into the specific upscaler models. Start by looking at the basic setup. You can download the workflow JSON on our Discord to follow along. In the main seed VR2 node, the resolution setting is your primary lever, and we are testing 2048 and 4096 today. A pro tip for troubleshooting is to enable debug for detailed logs if you run into stability issues. Memory management is critical here, even on high-end hardware. In the DIT load node, set your blocks to swap to 36 and move the offload device to CPU. We found that without these settings, it is very easy to trigger an out of memory error. The same applies to the load via E node, where you should enable tile encoding and tile decoding while also offloading to CPU. The developer made this system very flexible. You can manually download GGUF models like the 7BQ8 version and drop them into your comfy UI models folder under the seed VR2 directory. Once you refresh the UI, they will show up in your list alongside the defaults. We are testing six specific models today across 3B and 7B architectures, including both FP16 and FP8 versions. For our benchmark, we are using an RTX 5080 with 64 gigabytes of system RAM. Looking at the 4K render times for our third test image, the 3B FP8 is the fastest at 35 seconds, while the 7B FP16 is the slowest at over 53 seconds. Interestingly, the 7B Sharp FP8 variant clocks significantly faster than the standard 7B FP16. Please take a look at the comparison chart on speed. Let's look at the first comparison, which is a 1K to 2K upscale of a woman in a black lace top. Using the RG3 image compare node, it is clear that 3B FP8 is a massive leap over the original adding significant detail to the face and clothing. When comparing the FP8 and FP16 versions of the 3B model, the visual difference is negligible, so we will stick with FP8 to save resources. When we put 3B FP8 against 7B FP8, the results get interesting. The 3B model is actually sharper on the eyes and nose, but the 7B model adds a creative touch to the eyebrows and lips. It almost feels like a subtle image-to-image -image pass rather than a pure upscale. On the lace fabric, both models generate entirely different patterns. One isn't necessarily better than the other, but the 7B model definitely takes more artistic liberties with the texture. As for the Sharp models, I personally find the 7B Sharp version produces too many artifacts making the skin look fragmented. In our second test with a vintage silk blouse, we found the FP8 and FP16 versions of the 3B model to be very similar again. The visual difference is hardly noticeable. The 3B FP8 again proves to be a solid choice, especially for neck skin textures. Although it can make fabric look slightly over sharpened. The 7B FP8 shines here by softening that fabric while enhancing details like the blouse buttons. It feels more balanced and professional. Seven B Sharp FP8, in this case, actually does not make much difference.
Finally, we push the limits going from 1K to 4K on an image with complex mohair fibers and micro lace. At this scale, artifacts are inevitable. The 3B model produces a sharpness that starts to look artificial, especially in the skin folds and fine details. Look at her right thumb, for example. The 7B FP8 maintains a slight edge here with its creative softness, but even then you will see some unnatural rendering on skin textures when you zoom in this far. For most professional workflows, the 7B FP8 is the sweet spot for quality and creativity, but the 3B FP8 remains the king of raw speed and sharpness. Ultimately, the choice depends on your specific shot. If you are chasing maximum speed and a sharp, clean edge, go with the 3B model. If you need that high-end creative touch for professional portraits and realistic textures, the 7B FP8 is well worth the extra 10 seconds. As for the larger files, there is absolutely no need to touch the FP16 versions in your daily work, as they offer no visible improvement while slowing down your renders and eating up your RAM. And that's the node, all open source, no filler. Thank you for watching. Grab the file, keep creating.